Keep buzzing, YouTube. How's it going, everybody? Got for y'all today a UU show down live. And before I get into talking about the team that I will be using, I've actually noticed that my showdown lives get more views than my other videos. Now, I'm not complaining and I'm not upset about that. I actually kind of like that because I do enjoy doing showdown lives. So, with that being said, if you guys would like me to upload PS lives more frequently, more co more consistently, then just leave a comment down below and I will gladly do so and I will do other tiers. Also, stab mons has apparently become permanent on showdown, so I'll definitely be doing some stab mons. I might also be trying out the other different metas like budget mons or whatever else is on showdown and just see how that goes. But yeah, with that, uh, I know you've noticed from my team it's very offensive and that is because when it comes to UU, I like playing offensively because I've gone through the phase of playing stall, bulky offense or... Uh, semi stall in UU and I've just moved on from that to more offensively based teams and the real idea that I wanted to build a team around uh, this team around was I wanted to use Choice Bandit Flygon and Rain Dance Kingdra on the same team so I built around that and I also wanted to give it an offensive prowess so yeah first off we have Exelgore which originally was Quillfish, but unfortunately Quillfish was not pulling its weight around. It was way too slow and just got taunted by things like Crobat and Azov, as where well, Exelgore can outspeed them, get up at least one layer of spikes, and go from there. Next off, we have our Stealth Rocker and our Ground type and our other Water type Swampert. Just Swampert is so good, in my opinion, on offensive teams because. It's just really good. I, I don't know. <laughs> trust me. It's good. It, it's good. Trust me <laughs> Especially because it stops Raikou which could probably like sweep through this team if it was sub calm mind But if it has hidden power grass and I have fly gone, so I'm not really too worried about that But yeah, just a mixed defensive set because I want them to be able to take physical and special hits and stealth rocks and roar for uh, Getting up hazards and phasing out threats and dual stab Next, oh y'all, sorry, Excelgore. Uh, I have Toxic just for things like my Lodig, Zapdos, or Rhyperior, things that my team doesn't appreciate taking on one on one. Although Swampert can take Rhyperior one on one, when you bring in Swampert, they normally switch out. So yeah, being able to wear down Rhyperior accordingly is good. Then Yawn forces switch outs, Bug Buzz is for stab, and that that's really it. So yeah, next we have Scarf Mancha, which arguably is the best Scarfer and Revenge Killer in the UU tier. Next we have Kafagius as the Ghost type of choice. Reason being is that. Chandelure is weak to rocks and spikes and Kfaragus is really really bulky and when it comes to late game Kfaragus just about always takes one hit and then you can get up a trick room and just sweep from there So on to dragon number one. We have Kingdra with a weird EV spread I uh, I don't remember where I got this from but I wanted to try it out The 40 special defensive are just to be able to take shadow ball from Chandelure a little bit better and then possibly get up a rain dance or in return knock out Chandelure if you don't need to get up a rain dance with Kingdra. And then our second dragon is Choice Bandit Flygon and I know you guys see the Choice Bandit Quick Attack. <laughs> and trust me Quick Attack has actually really helped me out in certain situations. And I like it over Fire Punch just because I don't really like being locked in the Fire Punch because it even it doesn't really do that much damage to Bronzong and after 2 Outrage Bronzong is already worn down to the point where once you bring Flygon back in, Bronzog is not going to safely switch into Flygon again. So either way, Choice Band of Flygon without Rage beats Bronzong eventually one on one, and even then you can wear it down with Kingdra. So then you can beat it one on one. And the reason why I have Jolly Nature over Adamant is because I want the extra speed. And I mean, I have spikes and rocks, so that can ensure two and one hit KOs. And then we have Dual Stab and U-Turn. So yeah, that's a team, guys. Very very fun. Really do enjoy it. But let's get this started. Alright, battle number one, and my opponent has a nice, powerful team. Okay, threats. Uh, Flygun's gonna be a problem. He has Rhyperior, so I'm thinking he's gonna lead off with that. Either way, though, I still just wanna lead off with my Excelgore so I can get up at least one layer of spikes, so that's what I'm gonna do. Because nothing on his team learns taunt, and as I said, his lead more than likely is gonna be Rhyperior. And if he leads off with the Flygon and he outspeeds me, that just tells me that he's Scarf, so I can keep that in my mind. And if I wear down Snorlax. Kingdra should be able to sweep after a rain dance, so yeah, okay, he's gonna be leading off with the Chandelure as I'm gonna be leading off with the Excelgore um, I'm just gonna go straight for Lair Spikes because I want to start getting that residual damage on his team as he goes straight for the trick Wow, okay, I was not expecting that one. Oh, that's right. I have sticky hold. <laughs> yes Okay, completely forgot about that <laughs> Wow, I did not think that would actually work out for me. Holy crap. Okay, so he brings in the flag on and now we can see if he is scarfed or not. And the question is, do I want to get on my third layer or go for a yawn? 
Because he might lock himself into Outrage. Hmm. I think in the end, just getting on my third layer is definitely my better play. Oh, and he's got the Fire Punch. Okay. Okay. I see you. I see you. And I'm going to go straight for the Bug Buzz. And with him being locked in the Fire Punch, what I can do is bring in Kingdra. Although he does still have the Snorlax, which after three layers of spikes, I don't know if, will, if it still will be able to live a Hydro Pump. And even if I Rain Dance, he'll probably switch right into Snorlax. I could bring in Flygon because nothing on his team is going to switch into a Banded Outrage. And I know Kingdra is definitely going to be my win condition, so... I'm guessing, yeah, I think just Flygon is definitely my, my best switch in right now. Although I kind of want to go for the U-turn. But in the end, he's probably just going to switch into his Rhyperior. Well, yeah, because I can U-turn now into my Kingdra. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm going for U-turn. That way, I can get Switch Initiative because he's more than likely going to be forced to switch out, fearing that I'll possibly be Scarfed because why else would I bring it in? And also, I know, I know you guys noticed the awesome Wi-Fi battle background. Big, big thanks to Avizion for passing me the background. So yeah, man, thank you. And he does end up bringing in the Rhyperior just as I thought. Look at that. That did 21%. That's still a really good amount of damage. And now I can bring in Kingdra, and if he does want to switch into the Snorlax, once that's weakened, I can definitely start putting in some work with Kingdra later. And I'm going to go straight for the Hydro Pump as he just is going to fodder off his Rhyperior, which I guess isn't too bad of a play because he does need Snorlax to keep my Kingdra in check. Unfortunately though, with me revealing that I have a uh, Life Orb, he probably does know that I am now um, Rain Dance. So he's going to bring in the Snorlax, and the question is, do I want to stay in or switch directly on out? I think either way Swampers my best switching because if he does turn out to be Curse Lax, which apparently is has become a little a little bit more common, I can just roar him out. And he's just gonna go straight for the f I was <laughs> I was gonna say Fire Blast, I don't know why. I'm just gonna get on my stealth rocks. As he is going to go for the body slam again, and of course you crit me, because why would you not? <laughs> ah I want to save this for Raikou to keep him from bolt switching. Although, at this point, Hidden Power Ice will knock me out anyways. So I think I'll just Earthquake. Yeah, I'm going to get up a bit of power damage. Then bring in my Flygon. Oh, it turned out... Okay, he's probably the... Yeah, he's probably the offensive Snorlax. Which actually isn't bad. I've been using it myself. And I would bring in Manchow, but I mean... He's got Chandelure right there. So I'm going to bring in Flygon. And I'm going to click the win button. Ah. Oh. Question is though, though, no, no, yeah, just outrage, outrage, and and get out of here, Snorlax, which means hopefully I can set up a rain dance with Kingdra and just start sweeping. As he brings in his own Flygon, he's probably scarfed, so he's gonna lock himself into the outrage. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Actually, yeah, because now I can bring in Cafagus, and this is why I love Cafagus, because I'm gonna be able to easily live this outrage. Look at that, nice 87%, because you crit me. <sighs> really. Is this what it's come to? Me getting critted? <laughs> uh, somebody help me. Actually, hmm. This probably means my Kingdra can outspeed his whole team now. Okay, so I guess in the end, it, uh, and it's just frustrating. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Now I can just bring in Kingdra and I can just Dragon Pulse everything. Okay, good. So I guess the crit kind of is kind of all right because, I mean, with me being... Actually, no, because then it can bring in Chandelure. Crap. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Do I bring in, if, if I bring in Mancho, he just knocks me out with Shadow Ball. Although that would waste another turn of Trick Room. Ah, uh, I don't know, can because I don't know if Mancho can live a hit from Heracross or Raikou. I have to Dragon Pulse. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Holy crap. I don't know. I don't know if he was timid or if he was scarf, but oh, thank you, thank you. Um, actually, maybe he was scarfed. Was he? Hold on. No. What? I don't I don't know. Was he were you timid? Was he timid? Well, I don't know, man, because we need a... Hey, man, look at this. Kingdra in Trick Room putting in some work. All right, we're... We're fine, we're fine. This guy needs to hurry up and make a move. I'll be right back. All right, and we're back as he brings in the Heracross. Uh, yeah, he did turn out to be timid. 
Um, I don't know if Dragon Pulse knocks it out. I, I'm, I'm gonna run a quick cut. No, yeah, I have to go for Drake. No, no, cancel. Crap. Oh, wow, whoa. Hmm. I guess I run the calc wrong. Because it said it would live. Oh, no, no, okay. No, yeah, my bad. I think the max was like 69. The min was like 50-something. So, yeah, I think I just... I just read it wrong. Well, either way, Kingdra, thankfully... Making the comeback, although unfortunately at this point I have to rely on Manchow hitting high jump kick as it goes for the calm mind. And yeah, I don't it doesn't really matter. Cause another one's gonna knock him out. And actually at this point, I don't know if U-turn will knock him out, but if he does go for another calm mind for some reason, then I can just safely U-turn with Manchow without having to risk me missing high jump kick. But yeah, wow, that was a crazy first game. Um Kingdra in the in the trick room putting in work, and it all comes down to this. Okay, okay, come on, come on. You're well trained, Manchow. I know you. You're well trained. Come on, come on. Huh? I see you. I see you. It's okay, guys. Manchow's got this. Oh, God, I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna miss. Uh, that was a good game. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Manchow's well trained. <laughs> All right. Awesome first game. Okay. We're gonna move on to our next battle. All right, guys, we got our next battle. And ah, my opponent has a nice very offensive team so that's probably lead quillfish and that is nasty room cafagragus hmm so i'm thinking he's gonna lead off with quillfish uh question is though do i lead off with my excelgo or my kingdra because i can dragon pulse this thing then rain dance uh, I, no, I just think Excelgor is definitely my, my best lead. As he does lead off the Quillfish, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is Yawn, predicting him to taunt me. That way, I can prevent him from getting up too many layers of spikes as he actually goes for the Thunder Wave. Okay, he's not expecting that. So that's probably not lead su That's not suicide lead Quillfish then. Although, I don't know, maybe. Because, I mean, Quillfish can learn taunt Destiny Bond as well, like Frostlash used to carry. I don't know, to use zone, I suppose. He's gonna switch into the Arcanine. I don't really have a problem with Arcanine, so I'm just gonna stay in trying to get up as many layers of spikes as I possibly can. Please don't get paralyzed. Come on. Thank you. Alright, Excelgor, well trained. Okay, so I got my nice two layers of spikes. What I can do is probably I don't know, do I really need Excelgor for fodder? I don't know. But what I'm gonna do is just just yawn him. If he does wanna go for like a morning sun or something. And no, he's just gonna go for the E speed. That's actually not a bad play because he doesn't take the extra 1% of recoil damage from Flare Blitz. <laughs> and what I can do is bring in Flygon now. Hmm. Yeah, because if I just straight up Outrage, I can get off a nice amount of damage on the Bronzong. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring in Flygon and I'm just gonna go straight for the Outrage because I need to start wearing down Bronzong. I don't care if I get a three turn Outrage, either way, any amount of damage on Bronzong is very nice as he's actually going to fodder off his Arcanine. Okay, that's fine. Even if he brings in Kofish, he can't paralyze me. I'm still faster than it and Bronzong's still gonna take a decent bit of damage, like maybe 20% at the most and maybe 10% at the least. So either way, wearing down uh, Bronzong is definitely my main thing right now. Also, if I get rid of the Virizion, then that means Kingdra should have an easier time setting up a Rain Dance to sweep just because Virizion does have an amazing special defense. So I'm gonna put the timer on so he can hurry up and make a move. Hold okay, sorry about that. So he does bring in the Bronzong. Just gonna go straight for the Outrage. Ah, look at that. Nice 34%, guys. That's a good amount of damage. As he Trick Rooms. What? Oh, that's probably for Cafagagus. Oh, and I get a crit. Ouch. Ah. Uh, actually, that does kind of make sense because Cafagagus is definitely a big threat. And he's going to bring in the Quillfish, which unfortunately is faster than me. Especially in the Trick Room. So I'm going to have to bring in my Swamper just to Earthquake. Although that crit definitely did matter because getting rid of Bronzong was my main, main goal as he actually predicts me to switch out. I'm not gonna lie, I was thinking about bringing in Kingdra, but in the end, Swampert is definitely my best play just because I do have Earthquake. And if he does bring in Virizion, I'm faster than it, so either way, just Earthquake is definitely my better play. And even uh, Kfaragus can't do much to Swampert, so I'm in a good position right now just to basically Earthquake. As he leaves in Quillfish, he's just gonna get up a layer of spikes, that's fine, although that's gonna be very annoying, especially because of the uh, Nido King. 
And I am faster than him this turn. So yeah, I'm just gonna go straight for another Earthquake because I don't want him to get up too many layers of spikes on me. Although, he's probably just gonna bring in Virizia on the next turn. Either way, I am i don't know if I should stay in or not because I'm pretty positive Swampert can live any one hit from Nidoking because I am very specially defensive. So I kind of want to keep that at, keep this as much HP as possible. Although if he does go for a Sword Dance or something with Virizion, that could be very bad for me. So I have to watch out for for Virizion for sure. And again, taking forever. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. He finally made a move, left in Quillfisher fodder, allowing him to get a free switch into Virizion. And hmm, what do I bring in? I mean, I would. No, yeah, because I don't want to fodder off Swampert, because I definitely might need it, although... Well, no, yeah, because Nidoking could be Scarfed. Uh, I think... I don't think I need Kingdra. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to bring in Kingdra. Because I want to save Swampert for the Nidoking. And then all I have to do is just wear down Virizion a bit, and then I can, I can go from there. So let's see what he's gonna go for. As he goes for a Sword Zans. All right, that's fine. I'm not entirely too worried about that. I'm just gonna go strip for the Dragon Pulse. Even in, even if he knocks me out, it's it's not a big deal. Although, ah, uh, hmm. Do I, do I bring in... I don't know if Flygon can live a plus do, plus do, plus two leaf blade. Hold on, I'm gonna calc. No, yeah, uh, Flygon gets annihilated. So I have to bring in Manchow. But the question is, do I go straight for the Aerial Lace or do I U-turn? Because I feel like the switch into Kefaragus would be a little bit too... too obvious for him. Ah... Uh. Because, I mean, Flygon can live a hit from Cafagus, but I won't appreciate taking the hit. And if I can get rid of Cafagus, I can sweep with Manchow's high jump kick. Ah. Uh, no, yeah, I have to aerial ace. Oh, thank you! Thank you, he left in Verizion. Okay. Okay, okay, good. That's, that's one threat out of the way. Ah. Uh, what's he bring in now, though? Probably Kefaragi gets to get up a Trick Room, but either way, Swampert and Flygon can still live one hit at plus two. I know he brings in the Nido King. All right, a more aggressive play. But do I switch right into my Flygon? Because I don't think I need to keep Kefaragi. And I actually, do I really? I don't really need Manchow. All I have to do is get off a bit of power damage on this Nido King. And yeah, okay. So at this point, I don't need Manchow. Because all I really needed it was to outspeed his Virizion. So yeah, I'm just going to go for Air Lace. Get off a nice 30%. As he turns out to have Substitute. Okay, good thing I stayed in. <laughs> Actually, I've not seen Substitute on Needle King. Although I do know it is suggested to run Substitute on Needle King by Smogon. I just didn't think it would really be too helpful. Uh, luckily though, it's fine. Because now I can just bring in my, my Flygon. And I should be able to just Earthquake. And yeah, yeah we're good. Just going to Earthquake. Because even if his Kefaragus sets up a Trick Room, I can still take a plus two Shadow Blob, I believe, because plus four has about a 50% chance to Oko Flygon at max HP. So yeah, either way, if he does get up to plus two, I will still be able to live a hit. And yeah, so he does go for the Trick Room. And Flygon does actually have some nice natural bulk. So yeah, he's going to Trick Room, and I'm going to be able to knock him out this turn as he goes for the Shadow Ball. Thankfully, he doesn't grip me. And that's another victory under my belt. And my opponent had a nice score. 1757. So he knew what he was doing. But yeah, that was battle number two. So with that, uh, I don't know. I might get one more battle depending on how long that is. And then just end it off or not. But yeah, next battle. Alright guys, so I think this is going to be the final battle depending on how long it is. But yeah, my opponent has a very scary team. Uh, Crobat and Chandelure are going to be a pain. And if he has Foresight on Blastoise, that's going to be very annoying. So I have to watch out for that. But if I get rid of Bronzong, I should be able to put in some work with Flygon. And if I can get up a Rain Dunce somehow, I should be able to put in work with Kingdra. Either way, I think Excelgore is just definitely my, my safest lead. So I'm going to lead off with that. 
and uh, just go from there. He put the timer on me, man. What are you doing? <laughs> so he's gonna lead off the Bronzong. Hmm. I can go straight for the Bug Buzz to wear him down, or I can go for the Yawn. No, yeah, I think just Bug Buzz, because as I said, I need to wear down Bronzong if I want my dragons to be able to spam their dragon stab moves. Also, oh, and I I don't want this hacks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to get a Blair Spikes. That sucks, though, because I, did, I didn't want that. He's going to bring in the Crobat. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, my buddy Wander the win right there. So he's gonna bring in the Crobat. I think he's gonna go for the for the Brave Bird. So what I'm gonna do is go for the Yawn. As I am faster than him, and yep, he's just gonna Brave Bird. And then next turn, he'll probably fall asleep. Oh, he turns out to be bulky. All right, that that's you don't really see that often. Either way, I'm just gonna get Belair Spikes because this way, if I bring in my my Kingdra. Not, his Blastoise won't safely switch in, although this turn, what he should do is switch in the Blastoise, if anything. No, he brings in the Chandelure. Okay, that's fine. Because this turn, I can find out if he's Scarfed or not. What I kind of want to do is go for Toxic, so I can wear down the Chandelure. And yep, he is going to go for the Shadow Ball, just clean, knock me out, that's fine. And he turns out to be Life Orb, okay. Hmm. I can bring in Flygon now. Cause no, yeah, I think just King is definitely my best switching, and I'm just gonna go for a Draco, I think. Yeah, I can just go for no, yeah, I can just go for Dragon Pulse. As he switches out into the Blastoise, that's fine by me. As I Dragon Pulse him, ah, nice 46%. Holy crap! Yeah, uh, I, I don't want to risk. Ah. Uh. No, yeah, I have the Draco. Oh, okay, thank you. Because I didn't want to get, like, minimum damage on Dragon Pulse. So I'm able to knock him out. Although, although there was a good chance I could have missed Draco Meteor. So either way, it was a risky play at that point. <laughs> either way, I definitely feel Draco was my better play. Although now I'm sitting at minus two. And it can bring in Scrafty. Crap, this is what I didn't want to come in. But now I should be able to bring in Flygon. Because after plus one, I should still be faster than him. Oh, no, he's got bulk up. Okay, you don't really see that. I don't, I don't. Well, I don't see it often because like the most scrap, the most common scrafty I've seen has been with um with Dragon Dance. I think I'm just gonna U-turn. Yeah, because he shouldn't be able to do anything to my Swamper, and I can just safely roar him out. Because I don't think I'll need Stealth Rocks. Although they would be nice for Crobat. It's just that yeah, I don't. I can't let this thing uh really set up on me like this. So I have to go for the roar. Okay, he probably predicted me to stealth rocks, but either way, he should have just dragon punched. Not dragon. <laughs> what am I saying? Yeah, he should have dragon punched, guys. That's a thing. He should have um drain punched. Oh crap! See now I kind of feel like he has hidden power grass. Let's look at it this way. What can he switch into on my Swampert? He can bring in his Crobat. But then I can just bring in. No, yeah, I think just Kafag is my safest switch in. Does, do you have Hidden Power Grass? No, Extra Sensory, okay. Yeah, I should have just stayed in then. No, either way, I want to keep Swampert at as much HP as possible. And I'm just going to Shadow Ball, because I can live another one, yeah. And get off a nice amount of... Oh, another crit? Are you serious right now? Actually, I'm not going to apologize. I can't control this. I don't want this axe, though. <sighs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry about that. And now I can just bring in Manchow. And I'm gonna go for the U-turn. I honestly don't want the hacks. Because I don't need it. I could have been able to still revenge kill him easily. Um, either way though, that's part of the game. And I can't do anything about it. And I'm gonna bring in my Flygon. Because I should be able to take any one hit from anything that he has. So I'm not in a bad position. Actually, I'm probably still gonna end up losing. Because Crobat is definitely a big, big threat. So I have to watch out for that. As he brings in the Bronzong. Uh, question is though, do I outrage? Because he could Toxic. I'm thinking maybe U-turn. 
Yeah, I think just U-turn is my, my best play to get off a nice 25%. I can now bring in my Kingdra and see what he wants to do as he goes for the Toxic. Yeah, okay. Saw that one coming. And I just have to Hydro Pump at this point. Because I knock out Bronzong. If I set up a Trick Room, he'll probably just Gyro Ball me. And with my speed being doubled in the rain, even though I do resist it, I don't think I would be able to live a turn of, another turn of Toxic and um, a uh, Life Orb Recall. So he's going to bring in the Crobat. I'm just going to Hydro Pump again as he goes for the Brave Bird. Okay, that's fine. Actually, at this point, I think I get swept by this thing. Yeah, because I don't know if Flygon can live a hit or not. Ah... Uh... Okay, so let's say I bring in Flygon, and he switches into Scrafty as fodder. I knock that out, and then it's down to my Swampert and my Manshaw to somehow beat this thing one on one. Ah, uh, because I don't want to bring in Manshaw because it can just bring this in as I go for Stone Edge, and then yeah, it could just get very bad for me. If I bring in Swampert, I don't know if I can live a Brave Bird either. Mm. I have to bring in Flygon. This is my my best play. Okay, question is though, do I outrage or U-turn? I have to outrage. It's my only move I can go for. Because if he stays in and Brave Birds as a U-turn, then I still lose. I have to outrage. Oh, damn it! Damn it, damn it. I should have... Should have U-turned. Fuck! Wow. At that point it was 50-50 and unfortunately I caught heads and I got tails. And I got another crit. I don't know if that mattered just because uh, Scrafties are especially defensive. So yeah. I'm hoping I get a two turn. No, okay. And I'm going to get knocked out by this Brave Bird. Yeah. Alright guys, that's game. I can't do anything to this. Because I think you still live Stone Edge. Uh, do I bring in? Nah, I have to bring in Swampert either way. Yeah. Come on, team player. Come on, team player. You got this. I can live Brave Bird. All right, Swampert. You bulky. Your team player. You don't get one hit KO'd by anything, even if you're at 63%. Team player got this. Okay, guys. Team player's got this. As he brings in the Chandelure. Come on. Oh, thank you. Okay, good. Oh, dude, I'm not. <laughs> my heart's like racing right now. Because it all comes down to whether or not I live this and. Oh! Come on, this is. This is Torrent. Yes! Oh, and I got the burn! Wow, that was lucky. That was lucky. Oh, my opponent had a high score, too. Okay, okay, okay. Let, let's say this happened. Let's say I went for Scald and I didn't get the burn. Next turn, I would have gone for the Earthquake, predicting him to roost. Because that's really the only play you could have gone for. Then, I, well, I don't know if I would have been able to knock him out with the Earthquake. But either way, I doubt that burn at the end mattered. I don't know, but I'm not going to lie. I did get pretty lucky with the hacks. And I do apologize about that. And I'm getting messages from land. <laughs> um, but as always, guys, I'm going to show you the uh, team once more. Here we have Choice Band of Flygon. I'm kind of sad I didn't get to show off Quick Attack on Flygon, but there are certain situations where it does come in handy. Although if you guys really want to, you can put Fire Punch over it. We got the Rain Dance Kingdra right here. Next we have Scarf Manchow, Mixed Defensive Swampert, uh, Spiking Excelgore, and Nasty Room Cafagagus. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this PS Live. If you did, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to some more content, and don't go check out Wander of the Wind. And with that, guys, I am out of here. So, later.